Hello and welcome to the Quiver Channel. I am Jason, your host. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Beryl went off to the um, cemetery place. They'll cremate her and then give them back her ashes, which I'm going to spread in the little garden piece in the backyard. The big question when you do something like this is, what do you do now? See, Bertie's 15. He's a wonderful dog. He's amazing. And he's never been alone. Even though he's got me. So I've contacted my local charity and let them know that if they've got an older dog that needs a forever home, that is good with other dogs, then I'm available. Because Bertie Disease deserves that kind of company as well. And every time he goes downstairs, he looks at her bed and goes and sniffs her bed. Wondering where she is. Thankfully, it hasn't depressed him too much. He's eating his food and everything, okay? I'd be really worried if he stopped eating. But yeah, I can tell though he's not as thingy as he was before, not as lively. So yeah. Because of my disabilities and not leaving the house and that, which they know, I will always say that an older dog is better. But I know, no matter how much pain and how sadness from losing a dog, I know that the thing that I can always do, and it's put what I've advised people before when they've lost a pet, is you're not doing any disservice to your old pet. I'm no, doing no disservice to Beryl to give another dog from that charity a second chance. To give another dog the same kind of help and life that she had. It's what she would have wanted. And like I've said before, um, my first dog from that charity was Rex many years ago. And that was when Hugo, our old dog, died. Um, And as when Hugo got old, that's when I contacted him to him and said, "Hey, do you have a dog that would go nice with with went with Rex? Because Rex seems a bit lonely for companionship." And that's when Beryl came into our life. And then when Rex died, I rang him up and says, "Hey, do you have a dog that you think would go well with with Rex with?" Beryl and that's when Bertie came into our lives <laughs> and so it's just like a relay thing almost giving them because because I don't leave the house much if you've got two dogs they interact with each other they play with each other they they exercise each other and they bring life to each other dogs dogs love to have companions of their own kind um some dogs don't or only have to be kept just as a single dog but most dogs they actually love the interactions and that of a friend i mean let me just one of the last pictures i've got of 
Bertie and Beryl together. And this was when I left the room and shut the door because I had to go and check some stuff upstairs. So let's, let's go to desktop. I'll just get the picture for you. So, so yeah. I went upstairs to I went upstairs to sort out a few things and I didn't want to come back up because I was going to be coming back down. So This is what Bertie and Beryl when I walked back in the room after being upstairs for about 10 minutes. <laughs> that were them in the living room. Keeping each other company. So yeah. Giving asking if they've got any they might not have any, and I might might not um the places um the charity has changed quite a bit since the last time and you have to fill in an adoption form and everything now. I remember how we got Bertie. <laughs> I rang up the person I knew there and he says I said, have you got anybody th there that would go nice with Beryl? Because Rex has died and she's lonely. And he's like, okay, okay. He says, would you be able to bring him or her over to meet at, meet at the house here? Um, I, I said, I'll leave the back door open so that uh, and leave the doors open inside the house so that Beryl if she needs a way out if she doesn't feel comfortable with another dog coming into the house she can just leave and go outside and have space so I, I still remember how it happened so Beryl was in the living room on the sofa in the other house of course in the other house not this one and he brought the guy brought in this little bundle of um, fur and thingy and came in and just let Beryl let, let Beryl off the lead. She went up sniffed Bertie, wagged her tail, and they both ran off into the bed backyard together. And that, that was, he says, oh, looks like I won't have to take her back. I'll, I'll bring the paperwork next time. <laughs> and that's how they met. Yes, Bertie. You're a good doggy, aren't you, Bertie? Yeah. Arr, 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 arr. Yeah, he, he, Bertie's being even more clingy than normal, which is natural in these situations. So, if they get back to me, that's totally thingy. If they haven't got anybody, I'll just keep an eye out, see if there's any dogs that need a home out there. I mean, he'll be okay on his own, Bertie will. It's just... Oh. Dogs deserve to be as happy as possible. So what's on the cards other than that? Sometime this week I will get they're going to come and fit my gigabit internet. I will finally have gigabit internet and it's fibre to the property not 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 just to the box but fibre to the actual property. Um, 
been waiting for this for years, literally two years. We signed up for it two years ago and it's taken two years for them to get the permissions and everything for the licenses and all that kind of thing. You're a good doggy. Yes, you are. You're beautiful. So I'm not getting rid of my other internet, at least not to start with, because I need to make sure that the new internet, which is with a different company, is actually going to be work properly. Because internet is really, really important. But what I'll do is if it does work really well, I'll downgrade my old internet down to the cheapest version of it. And just go from there. I'm still waiting for my um, refund from Pimax. Because I paid via a, a tra transfer of some kind, it's got to come through as the same kind of way and it can take a little while for it to go through. So I've got to wait for that. Um, financially, until that hits, I am redlining it at the moment. Yes, I've got a bill coming out tomorrow that is going to take everything out of my bank account except for £1.27. This is what happens when, I mean, I haven't bought in food for myself because I spent the money on making sure that Beryl had good food. But I'm okay. Don't worry about that. I've still got at least a month's worth of food in the house. That's the whole point. I have always got a backup, so that's not a down, so really a bad thing. I will, and it was well worth it. I will always, always, no matter what, make sure my dogs, when they reach the end period, get looked, looked after properly. And don't have to go to a vet. And Bertie's paw, the one that um, healed really well. It's really you can't you can't tell which one of his paws had the actual thing. The scar tissue on it has basically covered completely now. Both paws look pretty much exactly the same it, there's there's the white fur has gone over the top of it it's a, um it's got to think i've looked after dogs i've always had dogs even my mum had dogs when i was born i've i've never ever been without a dog my entire life i've had dogs of companions it's the other thing dogs are very good for autistic people very good for autistic people always have been and so, what was it? First dog was Scruffy. He was my, definitely. Then it was Zeus and Zara. Then it was Zoe. Then it was Hugo. then Rex, then Beryl, then Bertie. Always. Quite long-lived dogs as well, most of them. Nearly all my dogs have, have basically succumbed to old age or cancer or diabetes at end of life. We've hardly... We've... Even Hugo. Hugo was a Rhodesian Ridgeback cross amazingly intelligent gorgeous dog let's see if i can find a picture of him do, 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 do. let's find a picture of 
Hugo. We call him Hugo because you go here, you go there. He was always running all over the place. He was like, he was a dog who constantly had the zoomies and literally freaking crazy dog. <laughs> so let me find a picture of... Right. Okay. Okay. Right, let me... From our old house. You always like lying underneath the blankets again. His little tag used to say mutant X because <laughs> he was a bit of a crazy dog. But wonderful. Now when we had him, he was very quiet. We had him from the dog's home and thankfully he was under the um, pet plan insurance because what they hadn't even though we had had a vet check him out it was the last dog that we had from the pub from the main um, dog's home we after that we decided to go to charities for rescue dogs because he was only about six months old or already big but he was very quiet and we had him checked out and he had hip dysplasia really so bad his hip dysplasia was so bad that there was basically no socket holding his this is a normal type socket that holds in your ball joint his didn't really exist at all the only thing that was holding his actual what was the muscles and tendons that was the only thing holding them um this is why he was never ever allowed to run off the lead because if he had ran off the lead he could have hurt himself and he could have basically disconnected ripped his back legs off in a really bad thing so how did we fix this well, back then we had a fair, it was a new type of surgery because the local vets couldn't do anything for him. They, they basically said, you know, you really should put him down because he's going to be in, be in a lot of pain with this and that. And that says, but we didn't want that. So my mum said, what's available? Who can we talk to? So there was a very advanced vet who was basically a vet, veterinarian college and they were doing amazing things. And they had a special procedure that um, I think it cost about £2,500 in total. Um, was And this, we'd only had, had the dog, had, we had only had Hugo for like a month at this time when we noticed this. Um, we managed to get the money back off the the pet stuff and they went after the and they got some money from the home because the home sh the home should have noticed this this was very noticeable and so that what they did is something called a denerving so what they did they went in they made two slits one on either hip and they scraped away the main nerve cluster on each of his thingies this would allow two things. First of all, would stop him being in any pain from his hip joints. And secondly, it would mean that he would walk normally. So he wouldn't be putting extra stress on. So they said to him, the estimate was 
you'll probably last till six or seven years. As you can see by the grey around his muscle, Hugo lived until he was 13. And it wasn't his back end that failed on him. It was he got diabetes and the diabetes caused fits. And in the end, he had fits that he didn't come out of the fit. But once again, he was very, apart from that thing right at the start of his life, he was very healthy for most of his life. And because we always walked him, we had a very, the nice thing about where we used to live is there was a track and field right in front of our house, but no one basically went on. So I could go out with Paolo and we could walk him. Um, it was a very strong dog. I remember once he picked up basically um, an entire young tree that had been felled and ran at us and basically upended me by running straight between us with this bloody tree in his well but yeah every dog we've had has been different every dog we've had has been unique but but the overarching thing is i've always me, Paula, and my mum always, always put our dogs first, no matter what. Even me, when going through cost of living, when going through COVID and that, when there wasn't that much available and that, and the first thing that would always go into my online shopping cart would be dog food. Before I choose any food for myself, it was dog food. They are my companions. They're my friends. When I'm not on here, they're the ones that are with me all the time. They're the ones that keep an eye on me. They're the ones that see if I sit down on the stairs and don't move for a while because something's totally taken my attention and they try to... will lick me on the face and that to try and make me move. They're part of my support network. But I've noticed <coughs> Bertie is definitely sleeping more. Now she's gone. Because we all remember Beryl. One of the things that she always used to do was make sure that he stayed up and was active more. She'd always engage him and play with him in there. He's definitely sleeping more and, and laying down more than he used to when she was here. Anyway, this is a long video we've had now, but yeah. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. And once again, I want to say thank you to everybody who messaged me, everybody who was there for me during all this. Like I said, it hasn't hit me as bad as other dogs that have died. Not because I'm desensitised, but simply because it was the right time. And it wasn't like... We weren't expecting it. We knew about the cancer for quite a long while. We knew what was coming for quite a long while. Um, and I got, it wasn't like an instant illness that comes out of the blue. Or you, one day you've got the dog, one day you've not. It was planned out. We knew when it was the time. And I still say the way she was that night when they came up until that point I was still second guessing myself as you do and wondering whether or not it was the right thing to do but when the vets came in the house and Beryl didn't get out of her bed 
that's when I knew that she knew. She knew. And she wasn't that she was sad. She was relieved. She was ready to go. I mean, I've had dogs like um, Zoe. Zoe. Zoe died of cancer. And Zoe didn't want to go. But Zoe had an extremely fast growing cancer. I mean, literally, I am not lying to you. Zoe, we noticed a little lump. She was... I think she was also about 16. We noticed a little lump on her side. And we had the vet out to check her. He says, if it is cancer and that, if we open it up at her age, if we can do surgery, there's a good chance she won't come out of surgery because at that age, anaesthetic is very, very iffy. So we left it. And for about a month, it was okay. It was just this little... Um, I would like to say the thumb tip, thumb tip size. And then within three days, it grew from that to that size. Literally that size. It just, it has obviously, it had, it had thingy and just mastitized and gone boom. Straight big and that. And you could tell it was draining every bit of energy from her she was she could hardly move on the sofa and that my mum bought over my mum loved dogs like we did my mum bought over she cooked up a beef joint a big beef joint and sliced it up and both coming up and and zoe couldn't even pretty much raise their head for that so we had the vet come out and the vet had to give her twice the normal amount of the medication to put her to sleep because her heart was so strong and she didn't want to leave. She was fighting it. Um, but yeah. It's what comes with having a pet. You've got to realise, if you take on a pet, you are responsible. Your dog, your cat, will give you unconditional love and be there for you. As long as you don't treat it or an asshole, as long as you treat it right, your dog, your cat, your will be there for you for everything. They will know when you're feeling bad. They'll know when you're crying. They'll know when you're down. They'll accept every part of you and who you are. But along with that comes responsibility of looking after and putting that dog first and making sure if anything happens, being there for that dog. And the few days weeks of crying and sadness of losing a pet is nothing compared to the years of happiness and joy and memories that you have with them in this day and age when sometimes it's hard for you to find <coughs> or have a relationship <coughs> Yeah, Bert's not very situationally aware. Sometimes he lies in very bad positions and then he chokes himself. <laughs> Come here. Uh, so. Yeah, always make sure that you're ready to take on that responsibility. Dogs are not, or can cats are not a part-time thing. You've got to remember when you go to work, will will your dog be okay on its own? Um, do you understand about feeding them and what you can't feed them? And there's lots of things like you, that will kill your dog. Like you can't feed them raisins. Raisins are deadly to a dog. 
chocolate of certain kinds is deadly to a dog. Um, macadamia nuts, deadly to a dog. You've got to know all these things. Onions can bother them, and so on and so forth. Onions, garlic, and, and keep... Oh, my God, the amount of people that use tea tree oil around their fucking dogs and that, and tea tree oil is pretty much toxic kill for dogs. Do not do that. You've got to be aware of all these things. But in return, you have a companion. You will steal your bed covers. <laughs> the amount of times I've got into bed. If he gets into bed before me, he takes up the entire freaking bed. And once a dog is in its position on a bed, it's like they turn into this um, gravity connecting thing. It's like they've got, almost got gravity driving them because it's almost impossible to push them and move them once they're in place. And once you've introduced the dog to your bed, never going to say, never going to have the bed alone ever again. Uh, but like I said, the positives completely outweigh the negatives. The positives are comp completely outweigh the negatives. Especially, f and for me, with my autism and that, having this extra layer of companionship in the house. Anyway, this this has gone on for too long, this ramble. Let's update, let's send this up. So I'll say bye-bye for now. <laughs>